運が悪かったんだよお前らは But I know where she is. Yeah, it's not like, you know. <laughs> it's not like we're on a time limit here. Haruka's fine. She's being held captive by the fucking Chinese triad. The Japanese Chinese triad. You know the triad in Japan is gotta be, like, way more fucking hardcore than the triad is here. <laughs> in America. You know they gotta be ride or die if they're the Chinese triad in Japan. Yeah, just it, fucking... So... Why does- why does the Triad want Haruka? Well, it's obvious that someone who's involved in the Tojo Clan Civil War got them to get involved, right? I mean, why else would they be involved? Why else would the Triad have anything to do with this? So... Japanese Yakuza... Partnering up with or recruiting the Triad to get involved with Haruka, to kidnap Haruka, and the Triad's method of doing that was to hire some gangbanger, Crips, Japanese Crips and Bloods, to raid Purgatory so that they could kidnap her. <laughs> this is some, this is some fucking Django Fett Count Dooku trying to assassinate Padme Amidala levels of passing the buck bullshit. <laughs> Darth Sidious told Count Dooku to kill Padme, so Count Dooku hired Jango Fett to kill Padme. So Jango Fett hired some shapeshifter to kill Padme. So the shapeshifter sends a droid to kill Padme, and the droid sends in bugs to kill Padme. And it's like, what the fuck? Just fucking kidnap her yourself, you idiots! I'm ready now, motherfucker. Look at my inventory. I got the meteor fragment. We're good to go. Look, man. Meteor fragment? That's all I need. Let's go. Let's go raid the fucking... <laughs> the Chinese restaurant. そうか、ガキオーバッタが。いい、今中華街の本部に監禁してます。これで例のお約束守っていただけるですよね。おお、お宅のジャカには30で文句ないやろ。30?じゃあ、島野さんは70ってことですか? いや、うちは50や。なら残りの20億は おお。来たか。なら紹介するわ。これが5代目大見連合の寺田いう男や。以後お見知りを聞く。錦山の方からガキの情報を持ってきたんが、この寺田や。残りの20はこいつんとこれや。そうでしたか。それはそれは。<laughs> so once again, who is Kiryu's primary antagonist in this game? Not Nishiki! It's Shimano. Shimano is Kiryu's antagonist. Shimano is the one wheeling and dealing and causing the primary conflicts that Kiryu has to deal with. Shimano's the one sending Majima after him. Majima is the mad dog of Shimano. Majima kidnapped Haruka. Shimano recruits the Triad. The Triad kidnaps Haruka. What has Nishiki done that has actually impeded Kiryu? 
Oh, well, he killed Mizuki. Oh, that was an accident. Oh, that was actually a fuck-up on Nishiki's part. The only actual impediment that Nishiki has created for Kiryu was something he didn't mean to do and was only done because of how incompetent Nishiki is at keeping his men under control. Nishiki can only cause, like, an obstacle for Kiryu out of accident. <laughs> Nishiki is not Kiryu's antagonist. Shimano is. Shimano is the main villain of this game in terms of the Japanese underground criminal, you know, involvement. Criminal element. And who's Shimano's main rival? Kazama. Just saying, it all ties back together. Jirogumo. Oh hey, we don't get a Nishiki flashback. The plot's moving too fast, man. We don't got time. We don't got time for a Nishiki flashback. Gotta go to Chinatown. Yeah, Haruka's so cool. She's metal as fuck. She's Oto Metal. ただ母親に会いたいその一心でな。ああ。ハルカが俺から離れようとしたって聞いたとき、俺は十年前のことを思い出した。何より大事なものを守りたい一心で。自分の下ごとを信じてた時の気持ちを今思えば俺は逃げたのかもしれないと思う。その人間が背負うべき運命を見てられなくて、それを見届ける勇気がなくて、俺は奴の人生を無理やり曲げちまったんだと。だが心の
Not only am I gonna fuck up Lao Ko Long's restaurant, I'm gonna destroy all his expensive urns and tableware. Eat shit. Yeah, so Kiryu literally, like, it's it's a, it's a, it's it's not just me. It's not just me <laughs> imposing my own interpretation. Kiryu says, like, fate dealt Nishiki his hand, and Kiryu thought that he was, you know, beating fate, but really all he was doing was running away from his own responsibility. Because Kiryu didn't want to become the leader of his own family. He didn't have the ambition to do that. He was just, you know, being fated to do it by uh, Kazuma's expectations for him. But ultimately, Kiryu didn't want that. And Nishiki certainly didn't want his fate of going to fucking prison. So... Kiryu thought what he was doing was saving Nishiki, but really all he was doing was running away from his own fate, which he didn't want to have anything to do with, and robbing Nishiki of his own responsibility. Nishiki had to take responsibility for his choice. Like, he, he killed a guy, he killed his Oyabu. He killed his boss, it was for a good reason, whatever. But, that was his decision. That was his fate, that was his responsibility. All Kiryu did was take on Nishiki's responsibility. And so, ultimately, Nishiki never had to take responsibility for what he did. Nishiki never had to grow as a person and overcome his mistakes, or get any real kind of affluence or credit for what he did. So what did Kiryu do? He didn't help Nishiki. All he did, all he was doing was running away. Running away from what life expected from him. And now... In the ashes of Kazuma's, you know, intentions, in the midst of all this chaos where everyone is scrambling, where, like, things are so out of whack and so, like, no one is at, is at the fucking wheel and the rudder is just spinning out of control, where's this ship gonna end up? Everyone wants to be cap- everyone wants to sit in the captain's chair. Ki what what does Kiryu have to cling to? He doesn't even know what he wants out of life. At this point. Like, so far he's just been trying to find out the truth. And ultimately still doing what Kazuma wanted him to do of finding the 10 billion yen in Yumi. But at the end of the day, he's still, like is at the point where he hasn't asked himself and no one's asked him, what do you want? What do you actually want for yourself, Kiryu? If you want to take destiny into your own hands, like you said, like that's what you thought you were doing, well, ultimately, what do you want your destiny to be? You gotta figure out what you want your... You can't just avoid what you don't want your fate to be. You have to know what you want your destiny to be, and then make that happen. You can't just run away from what you don't want. You need to find out what you do want and fight to make it a reality. Shimano-san,に頼まれてね、なかなかでかいビジネスだ。俺はそういうのに花が効くんだよ。お前もそうだ。日本の極道っていうのは本当に頭が悪い。ペンダントはどうした?特に売りさばいたよ。<笑> 
錦山にねどけちな島のには売れんよだったらもうその子には用はないだろう<笑>逆だ俺たちにはこの娘さえいれば十分何どういう意味だおしゃべりはここまでにしよう俺は力でジャカをのし上がった男だ<笑>キナマフィアの怖さを思い知らせてやる Let's roll, Lao. <laughs> Having a straight up Virtua Fighter fucking boss fight in the middle of your Yakuza game. Hey guys, do you like playing Sega arcade games? Time to have a boss fight against fucking Lao. <laughs> straight up, it's like not even, it's not even a joke. I'm not even fucking kidding. It's straight up Lao. <laughs> it's so fucking awesome. Oh, this game's the best. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, you know what? Excuse you. Excuse you. I have the power of gun. Whoa, what happened to your Guan Yu? Yeah, so. Not exactly the, uh, like, game nullifier that you might hope it to be. Look at that. Look at how much damage hitting him with a vase did compared to shooting him with a gun. What is the true power of gun in this world compared to vase? Nothing. Yeah, so if you want the, uh, the, uh, conspiracy board, uh, if the, the Jill Valentine conspiracy board, whoop, with, uh, the red string connecting it between, uh, thumbtacks, uh, add another, add a new, a new, uh, a new player to the board, a new player to the game here. Of Lao coming in at the at the eleventh hour, being like, "Eat shit, fucking Japanese." Shimano brought him into the game, but Shimano was too cheap and full of himself. So Lao's gonna like give Nishiki a boon. What has Nishiki accomplished? Well, uh, someone who was working with Shimano, who was pissed off at Shimano, threw him a bone of the pendant, which he didn't even value. Lao didn't even want the pendant, he didn't give a shit about it, so he just gave it to Nishiki because it didn't matter to him. Nishiki didn't uh, even accomplish getting the pendant. It was given to him as, like, a piece of trash that was thrown out the window mostly to spite Shimano, not even as, like, Nishiki made a better offer and played the game better than Shimano did. Like, he was just mad that Shimano only offered him three billion, so he gave it to Nishiki because Nishiki was the name that Shimano happened to mention when they were talking about the deal. <laughs> Nishiki sucks. <laughs> Well, that sounds like bullshit. Oh, shit, they're gonna smooch. Oh, shit, they're gonna smooch. Date san. Nani? Nani ga aro to Kiryu no shaku o arimasen. Ah, you villain. Date san. Dakara itta jana. You antagonist in this plot. Dewa. Yeah, so it's straight up like, yeah, Kiryu's under arrest because he's on a whirlwind tour of single handedly fucking beating the shit out of every single criminal in Tokyo, and that's causing a lot of problems. So we need to get him off the streets because he is causing problems by beating the shit out of absolutely fucking everyone. Yeah, I shouldn't have gotten kidnapped. 
本当はおじさんと一緒にいたかっただけどこれ以上おじさんに迷惑かけちゃいけないと思ってバカだなお前は俺が迷惑してるって思っていたのか<笑>だってさああ遅くなって悪かったなあんたこんなことしたらやばいだろうなだがもう遅い<笑> So that is why the Date sub story with his daughter was important to be part of the main story. Because it does explain why Date so ride or die for Kiryu at this point. It goes all the way to the top. ハルカをスターダストに連れ込んだ連中のバッジだ。花屋によるとこいつは政府の地下組織のものじゃないかってことでな。その線で調べてたら出てきたんだ。内閣府の地下組織。MIA ってのがな。MIA。ミニストリー・インテリジェンス・エージェンシー。エージェンシー。内閣が直接指揮を取る部隊だ。政治の裏工作から要人の護衛。責任者は。警察庁出身の大義士神宮って男だこいつが100億やはるかとどう絡んでくるかわからんがな政治家かラウカーロンが気になることを言っていたはるかには100億以外の価値があると100億以外のああどういうことかわからんがもう一つとっておきの情報がある東京湾の死体だがあれは水木じゃないえ鑑識で身元が判明したんだ。全くの別人だったよ。はっきりした証拠もある。博多だ。じゃあ、お母さんはまだ。そうだ。まだどっかで生きてるってことだ。なあ、はるか。俺は弓を。お前は水木を探している。だが、どんな危険があっても、俺がお前を守る。必ず母さんに会わせてやるからな。ショー出てくるときにつけられてたみたいだ。何？もしかするとジャカの連中かもしれない。くそ、仕方ない。キル、お前そいつで奴らの足止めをしてくれ。わかった。Hey, so I'm a cop and I'm just gonna give this gun to this former Yakuza member so that he can shoot men out of this car in this holy shit motherfucking. <laughs> Our action arcade gun rail shooter sequence straight out of fucking nowhere. Hey kid, do you like playing Yakuza? This exciting crime drama, like beat 'em up RPG on the PlayStation 2 from Sega. Get ready for a motherfucking arcade sequence straight out of Time Crisis. Oh, do you guys like playing fucking Virtua Cop? Here's a rail shooter second、uh, section straight out of Virtua Cop. Fuckers. Sega Arcade. Fuckers. Oh, it's so good. I love this. So, this whole sequence of gameplay was clunky as hell. As all hell on the original PlayStation 2. This came straight out of nowhere. It was not very good gameplay wise. It was clunky and the controls were just not there straight up. But it was such a cool moment because it was like, dude, this game is made by Sega. And what is Sega known for? What does Sega do? They do arcade games. So it's really cool actually to have this moment straight out of a Sega arcade game, straight out of Virtua Cop. Practically. Ah, fucker. I mean, this game was made by、uh, a combination of、uh, two development teams 
who came from like two different backgrounds, a group who came from a background of making Sega arcade games. I think, uh, what was it? Sega 2AM? Something like that? The guys who made that, uh, surprisingly enough, the guys who made that, uh, uh, volleyball game that I did, the, uh, Beach Volleyball Strikers one, I believe that was a, a, a Sega 2AM joint, whatever the name was. Excuse you, I don't have to know things. That's not my job. It's not my job to know things! Kid him! There we go. Kiryu never killed no one, by the way. <laughs> So I think that's just such a cool thing. Like, they're t this this team who, you know, is not experienced in terms of making console, uh, mainline console releases. They're used to making arcade games. So what do they do? They take that experience and have a gameplay... What would you? Have a gameplay sequence that plays to their strengths. That is based on gameplay that they are used to developing. It wasn't good, but I love seeing stuff like that, where you get a real sense of why is this in the game? All because someone who was working on the development team, like, that was what they were used to playing. It's like how, uh, you know, every fucking Hideki Kamiya game has a shmup sequence smack dab in the middle because he just really likes shmups. And he loves throwing it in there. The final boss of, of Devil May Cry 1 starts off with the shoot 'em up sequence. Of you doing a shoot 'em up sequence against Mundus. And then the last piece of gameplay that happens in that game is a rail shooter. Uh, no, uh, like a, a shmup style sequence where you, where you pilot the plane off of Melee Island. Why? Because he just fucking he, he likes that. Every Hideki Kamiya game has a sequence like that in it. it. You just get this sense of who Hideki Kamiya is as a creator from sequences like that in his games. And it's the same with this. I love, like, even if it's out of nowhere, even if it's kind of inappropriate, it's just like a cinematic random piece of gameplay that maybe isn't even that well done or integrated and maybe it isn't ooh, maybe it isn't the best in terms of gameplay implementation but whoop, that doesn't matter because all that matters is it gives you this 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 sense of who the people who made it who the developers were that they thought, let's put this in the game. You get a sense of who they are as creators, what they prioritize, and what interests them. So I like sequences like this, where it's like, you, you get, it, it's, it's, it's that thing of like, you get to see the fingerprints of who made the game. Even in this, even in this remade Kiwami, this extreme version of it, it's still not very well done in terms of gameplay. But that doesn't matter, because Sega's, like, people who worked on Sega arcade games, like OutRun and Space Harrier, made this. And you can kind of tell. And that's really fun. I really love shit like that. Video games are so fucking cool, you guys. Yeah, fuck it, keep going. I don't care. <laughs> so are we are we getting the conclusion? The final chapter in Nishki's story.
んじゃねえかおう組長さんよまたしのぎ広げることになったからよ金使わせてもらうぜおいこら聞いてんのかこっちがせっかく動いてやるって言ってんだぞてめえいい加減にしとけよ返事もできねえのかあ,あのなおめえはどこまでいたりなんだよたくまだ連れのキリヌが根性あったぜまやつがやっちまったことはまずいっちゃまずいとしてもキリはキリュウよりも根性がないんだってメイドの土産に教えてやる堂島組長をやったのはこの俺だそうだキリュウお前の携帯ああすまないシンジから伝言が入ってる聞いてみろシンジですさっき錦山組の本から聞いたんですけど兄貴の情報を錦のおじきに包むけみたいでそばに怪しい奴がいるはずですお気をつけて伊達さん花屋のところに行ってくれないか That this Kiryu walking around with his hands in his pockets thing just、oh, seems so out of place in retrospect. What's that? 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 What's 歌堀のところに行った時錦は俺宛てに電話をかけてきたあいつには俺の動きが見えていたんだああそれに水死体が水木じゃないならペンダントの秘密は誰から弓は失踪中はるかと錦山が接触したこともないなら出るぞキリュウセレナの映像だ4日前の映像を頼むお前まさかそうだ、再生してくれちょっと出てくれいってらっしゃいええ
So a lot of things happened. <laughs> So a lot of things happened. We find out that or when when Nishiki did call Kiryu and said and at the tattoo artist, he said, when you're in a position of power, things just find a way of being found out by you. Things just happen. And that was Nishiki fronting. That was Nishiki fronting hard. Nishiki has no power and no influence. He has no real involvement in this plot. Everything that he has has been given to him by others up to and including Reyna. Up to and including manipul like exploiting his relationship with Reyna to get her to drop the details to him that are relevant. So like... Those cutscenes, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I think they shouldn't have been sprinkled in between chapter introductions like that, like given before the new chapter page. I think they should have been presented a different way, but those new cutscenes are good for showing how Nishiki's character has changed. Because he comes to the same realization that Kiryu did, which is he got dealt the hand of You're, you are the one who is the killer. You are the killer, Nishiki. And what did he do? He ran away from it. He he let Kiryu shelter him from taking that responsibility and who he was supposed to become. He realized that he's off course, but he's so far gone in grief, in an inferiority complex, and in just like, a lack of anything else to cling to, he goes completely over the edge and says, fuck it, I will do whatever I gotta do and hurt whoever I gotta hurt and use whoever I gotta use. For what? Oh, I'll get to the top. I'll get to the, like, it's that same, like, what do you want? Well, I don't know what I want, but I'm gonna become powerful. That's all. I have no, like, I gotta get to the top, like he was telling Kiryu at the beginning of the game. He's got ambition, but in reality, Nishiki has a glass ceiling. But he thinks, I'm going to break through that glass ceiling by just fucking up everyone's bullshit. That, but that's never, that was never going to be you, Nishiki. And even now, it's still not you. <laughs> and then uh, there's the whole, oh... Mizuki ain't dead after all. That chick who looked like Mizuki and and had her tattoo and looked exactly like how she looked in that photograph. Uh, that wasn't Mizuki. I mean, we got a little bit of foreshadowing about that because Utambori said, oh, that's not my tattoo. But it's still like, oh, they killed Mizuki. Haruka, your mom's dead. Oh, wait, no, she's not. It's fine. <laughs> Actually, no, though. Uh, and that betrays the fact that one of the things about the way these games are written is they do write them one, like, one chapter at a time, basically. Like, they do not plan it all out. They they write them one chapter at a time. In fact, there's an inter... There, I don't know if it was an interview, but it's an anecdote from a store... From a book about the development of this game. <coughs> Where they talked about the guy who eventually, like, got the position to writing the plot of the story. 
talk about how like they knew it was gonna be a story about Kiryu and then like a little girl with a connection to him and the 10 billion yen. They knew those things. They just needed to figure out how the plot would go involving those elements. And so he was like, yeah, I'm just going to make the emotional core of this story, the relationship between Kiryu and the little girl, and we'll figure out how the 10 billion yen plays in later. And they were like, oh, dude, you got it. You figured it out. Like, that's really smart. <laughs> Don't try and figure out this wide weaving conspiracy plot. Just focus on a core emotional linchpin of the story and we'll, we'll figure out everything else as we go. So that is a smart thing to do in terms of like having a central driving focus for your narrative. But it does mean when you have to sit down and actually figure out what the plot and development of the wide crime drama conspiracy is. And you have to like just basically figure that out as you're writing it. That writing by the seat of your pants Stephen King style. It does sometimes result in stupid bullshit like that of, oh, Mizuki's dead. No, she's not. It wasn't Mizuki after all. It was actually someone else. Mizuki's still alive. Oh, you might think you came up with that idea of a shocking plot reveal and then realized, oh, wait, let's make it not that after all. And then didn't go back and rewrite what you already did so that it flowed more cohesively. Who, who is to say? <笑>キリちゃん。この目も見ていたらもう分かってるよね。そう。西木山君に情報を流していたのは私。本当に本当にごめんなさい。私西木山君のこと愛してた。彼に振り向いて欲しかった。だから彼の喜ぶことは何でもした。あの人が望むことは何でもしてあげたかった。それがどんなにいけないことか分かっていたはずなのに。本当バカだよね。でもあなたたちに会って何が大切なのかを思い出した。今更だけどね。私は責任
and his involve and his involvement in this personal dramatic conflict with people that are part of his past. This music's good. Uh, but at, like, they write all of the stories of the games that way, and it starts to get more and more noticeable. But yeah, so, Nishiki, what, what did Nishiki have? He just had Reyna giving him the details behind the scenes. And then once again, what is this conflict that Kiryu is dealing with right now? Oh no, he's gotta go save Shinji. Why? Oh, because Nishiki. What did Nishiki do? Oh, um, the person who was feeding him information decided she didn't want to do that anymore and betrayed him and tried to shoot him. And now Kiryu has to deal with the fallout of Reyna betraying and trying to kill Nishiki. <laughs> so Nishiki, you don't got shit! Once again, the only reason Kiryu is dealing with this conflict as a result of your actions is because you fucked up! Kiryu is cleaning up after Nishiki's incompetence, not dealing with a threat that Nishiki has orchestrated for him. <laughs> This is not, this is not, oh, I'm, Nishiki's using his, his, his resources in order to try and stop Kiryu. We saw what Nishiki's version of trying to do that was. It was, oh, go beat him up with swords. <laughs> Go beat him up with swords behind the bar. This is once again... Oh, Nishiki fucked up. Now Kiryu has to deal with Nishiki's fuck up. Ah, <laughs> oh, Nishiki, you're the worst... You're the worst villain. But what it does show is that, yet again... Kiryu is Nishiki's antagonist. Kiryu is Nishiki's final obstacle. And at every step of the way, Kiryu is one step ahead of him. Nishiki ah, thinks, oh, I'm going to get a leg over on Kiryu by getting Reina to give feed me information. But then Reina goes, actually, Kiryu is way better than you. I'm going to betray you. And, and, like, try and kill you for, for, uh, Kiryu's sake. And it's like, oh, Nishiki. Ah. Uh, you're bad at this, bro. <laughs> I feel bad for you, man. Nishiki's fucking up your plans and he's not even doing it on purpose. Just by sheer force of personality alone, Kiryu's fucking up your plans. And taking away that which you thought you had available to you to utilize. Fuck you. Oh yeah, by the way, this was a terrible fucking sequence of gameplay to play in the original PS2 game. I don't know if you could figure that out from these tight and closed corridors and 1,500 men that will be fighting as we go through them. Hope you appreciate having that mini-map in the corner because you fucking didn't in the PS2 game. Let's look at that map while we're- oh. Let's look at that map while we're here. Oh yeah. This looks good. This is actually the least bad floor too. Oh man, this fucking- this building. God damn, this fucking building is such a pain in the ass. This whole sequence. And, and, oh, don't worry. It gets worse. Rest assured. Rest assured, having to navigate these tight and closed maze hallways 
filled with furniture obstructing your forward path and fighting 1,500 men as you go. Don't worry, this is the good part of this sequence of gameplay. This is the part where we're having fun. Don't worry. Why do they take my gun away? Luckily, I brought my own. Look who thinks he's bad. Ando. Who do you think you are, Ando? He ain't shit. You fucking asshole. How dare you. Motherfucking! Yeah, I tripped and killed you by accident, you fucking idiot. <laughs> How Kiryu opens doors. Just throw men into them. Oh! Fuck it. I want to ride my... Cannot begin to fathom how little time I have for your bullshit. Cannot begin to count how little time I have for your stupid bullshit. Excuse me. Give me that. Oh, I shot you with my gun. <laughs> That defeated you. You also have a gun. Well, now it's mine, bitch. Thank you. Give me that. Fuck you too. Excuse me. I don't even want to use the last bullet on you. Why does Nishiki have so many dudes on his payroll? He can't be that good a boss to work for. He's killed like five of his own dudes that we've seen on screen so far. Like that's the one part that I find kind of unrealistic or unreasonable about Nishiki's power bases. I don't think Nishiki should have this much manpower. Where are all these dudes coming from? I mean, they're all weak and shitty, so there's that. How dare you wait until the end of my anime, my attack animation before shooting me. Who fights with glasses on? Where are you, Bayonetta? Take the glasses off, dumbass. Whoa! Whoa! Dude! Sakuma! Holy shit, dude. Are you okay? Sunglasses are one thing, but like, just straight up spectacles, like, what if they get broken? Then, then what, dude? If you're gonna get in a fight, you should at least wear contacts so that the glasses don't break during the fight. Damn fool. Kitty was running this family. This would, they, they, these mistakes would not be made. A block. Idiot. You cannot possibly think you have any chance. At what point do these guys not just go, man, fuck it, Kiryu's just gonna kick our ass. Are you having fun going through this building yet, by the way? At what point do the do, do the goons not just go, fuck this, Kiryu's gonna beat the shit out of us. Shut up. 
Sure is fun running up seven flights of this building through these very cramped, badly designed interior hallways. Oh, you have a shotgun. Isn't that cute? You're dead now. <laughs> one shot, one kill. I will take your shotgun, though. Oh, what the fuck? How dare you, sir? You took me by surprise. I didn't expect this behavior. Not from you, Ogura. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> Throwing the gun seemed to do the most damage in that. Oh, oh, don't worry. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. We're not actually at the end. Rest assured. Jump for it! that. <laughs> Here we go. Are you ready? Oh, he's so nice for not throwing him over the side like I thought he was gonna do. You fucking... There. You brought this on yourself. Oh, man, can you throw a motherfucker off the roof? Come on. You're not gonna- you're holding a gun. I can see you have a gun in your hand. You had to wait till I got down here before you could shoot me. <laughs> Kitty, you suck at shooting people. Why? <laughs> Why do these cutscene introductions take my guns away? Stop taking my guns away. No one dodges bullets but me, fucker. Are you ready? Are you ready, kids? I hope so. Wait,待て。あ、兄貴。キリュウさん。邪魔しないでください。黙る。近づかんでください。これ以上あんたに組み荒らされたくないんだ。お前信じに銃向けて恥ずかしくないのか。お前らの兄貴分だろ。悪いのは田中の
レナさっさと弾いて終わらせろや Hey, look everyone. It's the worst boss fight in the game. I hope everyone's excited to play the worst boss fight. <laughs> hey, look everyone. It's the biggest reason to never fucking play Yakuza 1 on the PS2. Because it has this fucking boss fight in it. The worst boss fight. In any game that has ever existed. Have fun playing this fucking boss fight on, on the PS2 with the original Yakuza game's jank ass fucking combat. I hope you're all ready to endure that fucking nightmare. Anyone who said. <laughs> Anyone who's like, no man, you gotta play the original PS2 game, you gotta see the progression. Fuck this- Yeah, have fun telling them, oh, you gotta deal with this fucking boss fight in order to get to Yakuza Z- to get to the rest of the Yakuza games. That's not okay. Don't tell people to play this fucking boss fight. Even in Kiwami, it's still fucking bad. This is also a bad boss fight. But man, the fucking boss fight in Yakuza 1 was fucking obscene! It's the worst beast. Just fucking stop being the worst, please. Oh no, he can't do that. He can't not be the worst boss. That's his job in life, to be the worst boss. How dare I ask him not to do that. This boss was literally so fucking bad in the original PS2 game. You have no fucking idea. You think this looks bad? It is. <laughs> God damn it. Look at- look. Oh, it's so fucking annoying. So, like, you- this is bad? No, man. You have no fucking idea. This fucking PTSD flashbacks of this boss fight on the PS2 game is the reason I'm like, fuck it, you don't have to play the PS2 game. You do not have to play the PS2 game to play Yakuza. Just play Yakuza Kiwami. This boss- this version of the boss fight's bad too, but man, is it, like, nowhere near as bad as that fucking PS2 game's one. Shinji. 